Okay, folks, 7 o'clock, can we call the meeting to order? Is there any changes to the agenda or can I have a motion? <coughs> can I have a motion on the agenda? Moved by Councillor Black, seconded by Councillor Finney. Those in favor? Aye. Motion. Those opposed? Motion is approved. Open to question period. Any questions to start? Mayor, Councillors, I'm Sharon Hicks. I just have a couple questions about the uh, additional fee that was approved for Crandall's at the last town council meeting. Uh, that amount was over a quarter million dollars and we were told it was to pay for, mainly for overseeing phase two. Um, the initial payment to Crandall's was over a half million dollars, so that's about half of the initial amount. Um, and he pointed out that the original RFP was for engineering design for phase one and phase two. And then for phase one, it would be the complete amount. For phase two, it was only taken to the design stage. And the additional fee of over a quarter million dollars amounts to 53% of the original amount paid to Crandall's. So therefore, the total amount paid to Crandall's uh, is over three quarters of a million dollars. Now, my question, first question is, uh, can we get an actual breakdown of the fees as to how much was for engineering and design of phase one, same thing for phase two, and how much was for project management and overseeing of phase one, and the same for phase two? Is that possible to get figures like that? I'll defer that to, to the treasurer. Yeah, uh, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's all broke down in uh, both our RFP and it's also broke down in the additional uh, fees that were approved by council, I believe last council meeting, and it's all uh, available and all broke down by, uh, by item. Where would we access that information? Um, I would assume that would have to go request through to the clerk's office, I believe. Uh, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on that, where it would come from. Will that be made uh, available to the public at any time? <coughs> well, I mean, uh, we, you know, I don't have the information here, but uh, I think our engineer can uh, probably post that on our website easily enough to, uh, or send it out to you as well if you want to send an email to the clerk's office uh, okay. and we can uh, provide it at that time, but direct back to you. To Donna then? Yes, dbeal at okay, sackville.com. Okay, next part. Um, I'm just trying to make sense of some of the things that were, that were uh, told to us at the last meeting. So we were told that the usual expected amount for consulting and engineering fees usually would be around 10% of a total project expenditure. And then he mentioned that these two expenditures amount to 8% of the total for phase two. But what were the actual two expenditure figures that he was referring to to get that total? And what was the total, the actual total used to calculate the percentage amount? Mr. Ackman. Um, the, the number that I uh, used for that was, I believe, the two, 200 and some thousand dollars. Uh, I'd have to go back in my notes and, and double check that, but that okay. can be done. Okay. We can let you know. All right. And the total used to calculate the percentage amount, uh, what was that based on? I think it was percent of what? Well, in, ge in general, uh, what I reported to council in general, um, projects of this nature can range in between eight to ten percent uh, of the total uh, cost of the project, give or take. Okay. And now uh, the consulting fees paid to Crandall's last fall included design work for phase two. So was that portion of the earlier fees included in the total that you were working with for phase two? Or was it just another portion? The uh, initial RFP was for the design of uh, phase one and two. 
-hmm. It was uh, to include the uh, site inspection project management of phase one mm -hmm. only. The second one was for the site inspection project management, uh, uh, additional design uh, due to some changes uh, for phase two. Okay, how much, how does the figure for the um, overseeing and management for phase two compare with the equivalent amount which was to be covered in for phase one? Uh, I, I don't have that information here in front of me. Um, I, I can get that information for you, but mm -hmm. uh, again, these, these were, these, were uh, these estimates are within the uh, budget numbers that were budgeted uh, during the application process to the clean water and wastewater uh, funding program. Mm -hmm. uh, they were all w within and under the <coughs> estimated budget uh, for the both projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, just Your one Worship, another. I guess I was just wondering, you, you have a list of questions there on the fees and they're very specific. Mm -hmm. I think if you were wanting the information, if you want to email those questions to our clerk, we could certainly provide could, that to you. I can you. do that. Yep, I can you, do that. It's just a, obviously the engineer wouldn't have all of those figures no. at his fingertips here this evening. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can do that. Um, can I just ask one more? It's just for comparison. How much would have been paid for overseeing the Bridge Street project and what percentage of the total for that project would have been the fee for overseeing? Just ballpark figures would be sufficient. Just so we get a general idea. There, there was no consulting. The town had done that uh, on our own and uh, we used our own resources. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No? All right, move on to disclosure of interest. You've all had a look at the agenda. Are there any disclosures of interest to make? Hearing none, there are none. We go to uh, minutes, regular council meeting of May 8th. You've all had the opportunity to look at that. Any questions, comments? Moved by Councillor Evans. Seconded by Councillor Aiken. Those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried for regular council meeting May 8th. Closed in camera special meeting of May 8th. Moved by Councillor Black. Seconded by Deputy Mayor O'Neill. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Special meeting of council May 16th. Moved by Councillor Aiken, seconded by Councillor Butcher. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Closed in camera special meeting June 5th. Moved by Councillor Mitten, seconded by Deputy Mayor O'Neill. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. And special meeting of Council June 5th. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Mitten, seconded by Councillor Tower. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Is there any business arising from the minutes? No? Okay, item number seven is the election of the deputy mayor. And this process, as I discovered last year, is a call for nominations. And um, if there are more than one, we'll talk about the process after that. Uh, Councillor Black. Uh, thank you, Worship. I'd like to nominate Bill Evans for the position of uh, Deputy Mayor. Moved by Councillor Black. Seconded by Councillor Butcher. Okay. Are there any other nominations for Councilor Finney? Macon for Deputy Mayor, please. Okay, moved by Councilor Finney. There's a second. Seconded by Councilor Tower. Okay, that's two calls. Are there any other nominations for Deputy Mayor? Are there any other nominations for Deputy Mayor? 
Are there any other nominations for Deputy Mayor? Okay, so we have uh, two motions, two motions that were seconded with two candidates. So the process we will follow, we did check this out if we happen to have one or two. Uh, what we will do is ask the, the clerk or the acting clerk to give each of you a uh, slip of paper and you will put down the name of the individual of those two that were nominated. They will take it out and come back and, re and announce what the uh, results are. raise a hands or a secret ballot. So they're going to collect the ballots and step outside the door. So we, um, I, I was going to ask Mike to do a tap dance to entertain us, but uh, has, oh, that, yes. has that boot on tonight. I think that's harassment. It does make all the noise. Deputy Mayor? Yes, while they're doing this, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, mayor, councillors, and the staff uh, that plus everybody that's out there that's supported me as deputy mayor for the last five years. It's been a journey and a half. Anyway, it's time to take it a little easier, and I wish whoever gets nominated the best of luck in the next year. Thank you very much, everybody. But I want to express both my personal gratitude towards you uh, and also council as a whole. Uh, we understand the... Uh, Many of us understand the position that the deputy mayor gets stuck in. All of a sudden, you're asked to do something. You know, what, what, where am I going? What am I doing? And, and other times, you, uh, you, you represent the town for several events in a row. It's not, uh, I should have probably said this before you nominated each other and, and uh, accepted it, but it's not an easy task. Um, it, it, it can be hectic, especially with my schedule. It is, has been quite hectic. So uh, again, I appreciate that, and Council appreciates that your time and effort and dedication you've shown for that. Thank you. Michael? We have a 4-4 tie, so we'll ask Mayor Hyam to break the <laughs> tie. <laughs> This is a very difficult uh, situation to be put in. And uh, I did check the rules to see if I could just flip a coin or something, but apparently that's not allowed. Um, so on this basis, um, <laughs> pregnant pause, there's a reason for that. Um, I really have a, a little, a little to differentiate, quite frankly. Um, and uh, I will uh, cast a vote in favor of Councillor Aiken. Uh, there is no uh, slight at all for Councillor Evans, as he knows I rely on him for uh, multiple things, um, and I, I respect his advice. Um, I think that, uh, Councillor Aikens, it's uh, your opportunity, and I uh, appreciate both of you for standing, and I appreciate Council has faith in so many of our members to play this role. I mean, in essence, we have, have had three people in the first year express and council express interest in all of them. So uh, it is a difficult choice and uh, I'm sad to have had to make it, uh, but uh, it does come up in another year. So recall that next time. Um, Councillor Aikens, would you like to make any remarks? Uh, thank you, Worship. Um, thanks everyone for your support. Uh, I shall uh, certainly try my best to live up to the standards set by uh, Councillor O'Neill. I was going to say I'd, there are big shoes to fill, but I realized that they really aren't. Um, <laughs> but let's say <laughs> she set the bar very high. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so th thank you for that. Um, uh, is this, does this take effect immediately? In essence, we now refer to him as Deputy Mayor and Councillor O'Neill. Okay. 
and we'll do the administrative work tomorrow. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Southeast Regional Service Commission, um, neither myself or the previous deputy mayor could make the, uh, the session this week. There was a meeting on Saturday. Uh, there was a meeting the previous Friday, which was also the AGM of the commission, and I was not back in town at that point. Um, and on Saturday, there was a meeting of the boards to discuss the strategic planning report that had been tabled. We have a copy of the strategic planning report for the board. Uh, there are some other events which I'll talk about in a few minutes, but uh, uh, I have nothing direct to report as we did not attend either one of the two meetings that were held this, this month. Sorry about that, but that allows us to move to planning. Thank you. <clears throat> In the month of April, there were four building permits issued, uh, four total issued. Um, this brings our year-to-date total to be 13 permits for a construction of value of 1.3 million. This uh, is consistent with last year where this time there was 15 permits issued for a construction value of 1.3 as well. <clears throat> In the month of May, the Southeast Regional Service Mission Planning Review and Adjustment Committee um, did hear one variance concerning a frontage requirement on Pickard Place, and they did grant that variance to reduce the frontage requirements of that lot. As well, we've had a vacancy on that Planning Review and Adjustment Committee, and that has been fil fulfilled by uh, Jennifer Jarvis, who is a Sackville resident, so she's our latest appointee. Any further questions? I, I'm just a little interested in your other two projects that you oh. ma mentioned. If you would, uh, the other two projects were uh, sessions that were attended. Uh, one was the natural assets management um, session that was held at UDM. This is kind of an ongoing thing that uh, Southeast has been working on, looking at computer modeling and assessing the how natural assets of ecological systems can be used to uh, reduce your impacts of, on your infrastructure. So, you know, using ponds and naturalized systems to reduce stormwater management and those kind of things. So there was uh, quite a bit of discussion from the, uh, there's representation all across, including accountants uh, dealing with how, you know, they're perceiving how to allocate funds associate a fund with, with these particular natural features. And the second one, which uh, was a workshop put on, or not a workshop, a um, conference put on by the NB, or Nova Scotia planners. Um, and that was specifically on uh, transportation related public <coughs> streets, the use of public streets for, as public spaces, not just as traditional uh, movement of vehicles. So incorporating, uh, such things as events shutting down uh, streets for to hold social events and, and those sort of things. So. Did you see any um, uh, conflict between those two in terms of the, the, the way in which streets were regarded in one workshop versus the need for streets perhaps to be designed differently for retention, detention, and did it come up together? There wasn't a lot of crossover. Um, now, I there were certain sessions that I attended from the, the Nova Scotia one. I couldn't attend every session because they ran back to back. So there might have been some that were that were more applicable to the other. Um, but generally mine were more very specific in like pedestrian sides of streets and also like event sides. So there wasn't really that correlation made there between my okay. sessions. Any questions? Any other questions, Council? Council Evans? Yeah, what is the length of the term on the PRAC that Jennifer Jarvis has been appointed to? Uh, the positions are four-year appointments. Um, they're staggered specifically so that uh, we <coughs> have, and then they can do two consecutive terms after the four-year. Councillor Finney? I was just wondering, the uh, Mount Allison University subdivision from 22 meters to 20.174, why did they want that? Well, they were creating the lot. At presently, that particular lot that was at the end of Pickard Place did not have direct road frontage onto Pickard. 
um, just because of the layout. So this was allowing for that frontage to be obtained and uh, they had to apply for a variance to, to meet the, the setbacks for that, or sorry, frontage crimes. Any other questions? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, number nine. That is for me. <clears throat> uh, proclamation, plaid for dad day, June 16th, 2017. Whereas prostate cancer is the most common cancer to affect Canadian men, and whereas one in eight Canadian men will be diagnosed with the disease in their lifetime, and whereas the survival rate for prostate cancer can be over 90% when detected early, and whereas Prostate Cancer Canada is the leading national foundation dedicated to the elimination of the most common cancer in men through research, advocacy, education, support, and awareness. Now, therefore, be it known that I, John Hyam, Mayor of the Town of Sackville, do hereby request the citizens of Sackville to join with our Council in recognizing June 16, 2017, as Plaid for Dad Day in support of prostate cancer awareness and research. This is a, a new initiative by this group, um, trying to raise profile and what we're asking is people to wear a plaid shirt or pants or ties or whatever you like on that day and uh, just note to people when they ask or remark how good you look um, that uh, it's about plaid for dads and prostate cancer that day. Any questions? Thank you. We start with the uh, mayor's report and with your, uh, with everybody's uh, um, agreement. I will probably I will ask a couple of other people to supplement things here. Uh, Although I was traveling a lot, it seems like I got quite a bit of things put down. Uh, first of all, there was the Air Cadets graduation, which I attended at the uh, uh, Middle Sackville Baptist Church. Um, I also took a call from um, a convener of the Mount A President's uh, Search Council, uh, asking for advice or opinions from the town's perspective on what the characteristics of the university should look like in the next 10, 15 years, and what characteristics should a president perhaps have to reflect them. Uh, I had a very good call about it. Uh, we shall see what their next steps are. Um, we had a couple of relationships with Opportunities in New Brunswick, and uh, also with New Brunswick power officials on separate occasions uh, to do with economic development opportunities here. It was They were candid. Uh, the MLA joined if, me with a couple of those, and. Um, we were pressing, of course, for some action on uh, uh, both uh, both of the major items I've been pursuing for some time in terms of uh, Maloney starting in on some form of phase or not, and uh, the Terra Biata development in the industrial park. Um, we did get uh, some interesting responses, uh, but we still don't yet know as of now. I will be following up again tomorrow and the next day uh, where that stands. Uh, we did the walk in the park. Uh, some of you showed up for that uh, Alzheimer's research uh, event. Um, we also had uh, Frank Cowan Insurance and Sears Insurance come in and donate to the uh, waterfowl park, particularly for an observation deck. So we met them here and had that, uh, that photo taken with them. We thank them very much for that. Um, the, we've had a couple of exchanges on our 150 uh, proposals. We are still awaiting the formal approval. We, we're not exactly sure when that will come, but we're, we're, uh, we're pretty hopeful what will, what will, when it will come uh, is the question, what will come, I think we're pretty hopeful for. Uh, we have had a couple of calls on uh, the 150 plus just about when things are going to start happening because groups want to plan what they're doing. So we have had to take a few of those and we really don't, can't give them an answer yet because we haven't had that final call. Um, got a message from the wind farm manager in Amherst who had heard there was a lot of things going on here with wind 
Uh, he simply wanted to offer that we had some experience and some abilities and that they're more than happy to participate or advise any groups or any people that are interested over here about wind energy. And uh, so I have put his name and contact through at, 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 with his approval to some of the people that are looking at wind energy in and around town right now. Um, I had a surprise call from uh, David Kuhn, member, uh, uh, head of the Green Party, who was coming into town and spent uh, about an hour with me. Um, it was simply, I believe he was here for other reasons, but uh, we had an opportunity to talk about many of our issues, including Maloney, um, um, tax assessments, uh, Schools 2020, um, uh, flooding, the problems with the dikes and how who's going to address the, the longer term saltwater flooding and how will that be addressed. Uh, it was very productive and uh, we actually have exchanged a couple of further items to allow some of our groups to, work, to uh, get some more information from him and his office. So that was useful. Um, we, uh, the Legion, we got a call, uh, call from the Legion and we uh, sent a letter in support of their energy efficiency grant, which uh, came and went very, very quickly. They needed it that, I think within 24, 48 hours, it had to be submitted. Um, uh, ProWind, one of the companies that is looking at it, was in town again this month and I did meet with them subsequently and uh, we talked about some of their, uh, who they were contacting, they were talking, they actually met. I believe they did meet with the wind manager in, in Amherst. Uh, they met with the student council at Mount Allison, the representatives there. Uh, they met with potential uh, landholders. Um, they t also reached out to the, the Beau Sejour Energy Corp. And they made several, they're, they're really grounding themselves in some of the local groups uh, that may be supportive of them. So I was pleased to, to see that, and uh, pleased to have them. Um, when I was out in uh, BC, I met somebody from Sackville out there and they made passing reference that uh, they had won a provincial hockey championship when they played out here. And um, when I got back, uh, well, he, the, the response was, we had won, but there's no banner up in the rink. And the last time they had come in. So I, I made some calls to, who else? Wally Sears and Dave Wheaton. Uh, and they appear to have confirmed that uh, this group, this team did win a provincial championship. And uh, I believe Todd is now working with them on uh, possibly getting a banner so, so uh, we hope that that will that'll be a, a nice uh, opportunity for them to celebrate it some many 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 years later um, we also met with um, uh, two things one is that some of you who walk downtown on a regular basis will see red ramps outside of the bridge street cafe those were installed uh, this weekend and we had a very small ceremony uh, it is part of the age-friendly initiative. It is part of the Stop Gap Initiative, which is a, a nonprofit foundation that is dedicated to creating uh, ramps for businesses that has one or two steps uh, up so that people with some mobility disabilities, and I'm not looking at anybody in particular right now, but, um, <laughs> but they can easily get in and around uh, where steps would have been a problem. And this, they hope, uh, there were three ramps, one inside Napole for that awful step inside when you look up at the pizza uh, oven and you suddenly go down, and uh, two at Bridge Street, one outside and one inside for the same reasons. So it's, uh, it is linked to the age-friendly, but it was undertaken by a couple of uh, individuals and it's moving ahead and they're taking more orders. Uh, the school is now going, getting involved in the vocational end of things to help build them to the designs. So it's uh, one of those really neat things, costs nothing, uh, include, includes more people, and um, builds, uh, builds a community for, for more people. Um, also just uh, yesterday at the Vogue, there was uh, 13 Ways to Kill Your Community session, and uh, several of us were, were there, and uh, it was a very, I thought a very good session, and we had the mayor from Riverside Albert drive up to attend, and he seemed to be quite Im impressed with it. Um, Councillor Finney won the uh, door prize, and he has the book. Um, d would you like? To <laughs> uh, uh, the other big one, which uh, the CIO will also speak about, we met CN Rail here. Uh, they also met with the engineers about our concerns about their relationship with the flooding, both present plans and the long-term relationship, 
106 across the marsh, et cetera. And that allowed us to confirm a uh, meeting in Ottawa, which uh, Councillor Black, myself, and the CAO attended with the vice, senior vice president. And uh, then another vice president who isn't senior came by later and we gave him the same presentation. Um, and my impression was that uh, we, we have uh, a mandate for them to work with us on specific items that we had asked for. And uh, we shall press forward with hopefully seeing the cooperation we need. Um, they certainly understood uh, our short-term needs and the dangers, as we described it, of the long-term of that railway being cut by uh, saltwater flooding at some point. Um, we also attended uh, the FCM, and uh, I think to me that uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about this probably at the next discussion in more detail, but the FCM meeting, I would specifically note uh, that our, our, our meeting with CN was, was very productive, and um, much of the discussion was around infrastructure, infrastructure funding and how it, where it can be applied for and how it can flow out, et cetera. And we'll talk a little bit more about that when we come back. But um, I'd just like to uh, ask uh, Councillor Black and, and Councillor Butcher perhaps to just make a mention of what they were struck with. And Councillor Black, are you? Um, thank you. I, I just wanted to add one more point about the CN meeting. Um, the, the men we met with were also very happy that Sackville had adopted the CN rail safety and setback protocols. Uh, and they had said that a very few communities in Canada had even looked at that yet. So it should make us feel pretty proud that we're you know, on the right path. Um, just, to, <laughs> I wrote so much about the FCM. Um, there's just a couple of things that, uh, stood out to me as being particularly important. Um, one of them was, uh, there was a workshop on Friday uh, that I was really looking forward to and it ended up being amazing. But it was uh, reconciliation through economic development, service agreements and relationship building. And the FCM had created this workshop to help municipalities take those first steps in finding a balance with Indigenous peoples of Canada. Uh, it was a, a, a well attended uh, workshop for the small room that it was in. Um, and uh, the talk was very candid. Um, and it, anyway, it was just fantastic. Uh, the, the plight of our First Nations people has been an issue that has been skirted or avoided for many, many years, and it's time uh, for we as a nation to come together and support our citizens. To that end, I would like to see Sackville take a lead as a municipality and begin the process of creating a statement of reconciliation one that acknowledges the First Nation people who live in this area and those that lived on the land we now call our home. Uh, and this was a huge push from the FCM, not just in this workshop, but it was mentioned time and time again uh, in the rural plenary, uh, uh, other workshops that we had been to, questions that were asked by other municipalities across Canada. It just, the, uh, the idea of um, reconciliation with First Nations was always at the forefront. Um, the, the other thing that I was excited about was the Urban Community Garden Network of Ottawa, which was a tour that I went on, uh, and it was just amazing. Um, we, we have a community garden in Sackville, which is, which is pretty good, but to see it in a, in a huge city like Ottawa it was impressive. They had created 90 urban gardens uh, in the last five years, and they started with four, I think. Um, and it just made me think about our own community garden and how it might be nice to sort of try to expand that and build on that as a network format. Um, ideas came out of this of having community gardens be more involved with schools and our local food bank, um, looking at funding a garden under a community garden mandate. Uh, no, so no matter where somebody had a community garden, if they wanted to have it on their own property, as long as it was open to the public, it could be potentially part of that. Uh, and of course, using the Sackville Commons uh, as a partner with uh, funding and potentially teaching gardening and practices uh, to people who would want to learn. Um, having a large town composting center uh, that could be used to produce high quality compost for sale um, to help create funding for food initiatives and community garden networks. Uh, and then we met a beekeeper who, uh, just this young guy who um, decided to sort of take it up and. He had made some money when he was young and spent it all on traveling the world and learning about beekeeping. 
and uh, and that was being worked into the um, food initiative of Ottawa as well, which we have a, an internationally recognized beekeeper in Sackville named Peter Hardy who would potentially be uh, open to this idea. But anyway, there's so much more, but <laughs> those are the two things that would uh, that surprise me the most. So thank you, Councillor Black, Councillor Butcher. Thank you. Um, yeah, there was so much. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for giving me the opportunity to go and learn so much. And now I think it's really important that we, as the ones who went and learned all of the information, um, to take it back and be able to share it and and use it within our community. So um, there's there's lots to talk about, and I'm not known for my brevity, so I'll really try to be concise here. Um, I went on one um, tour that was called Good Food in Schools and a role for municipalities. And at first I thought, I mean, we have a breakfast program in our schools and I don't really understand what the purpose of a municipality would be in that. But they were doing some really amazing stuff with not just providing food to children, but growing food and building a curriculum around it. And um, as most of you know, I'm, I'm an educator in my background, so I found it so, so interesting um, about what we can do as a municipality to assist in um, assisting that whole curriculum to come to fruition. One of the biggest problems that you face when you're building a garden and growing food in a school is that school ends in June and starts up again in September. So a lot of it focused on what they had that was working well for them and what role a municipality could have with carrying over during those summer months to ensure that um, the ball kept rolling. Um, I'm, I've made a couple of contacts within our school system and I'm, I'm planning on, <laughs> because I'm an educator, in a couple of weeks I've got a bit of free time, so I'm planning on meeting with um, some people to see where we're at now and to see if I can be of any assistance with moving that initiative forward. It was very, very exciting, so that was a great thing. Um, and one of the sessions that um, Councillor Black and I were actually able to attend together was um, called, uh, the workshop was titled, As an Elected Official, What is My Role in Stakeholder Engagement? And it was fabulous. There was so many wonderful um, things and it was a really well um, presented workshop. Uh, and there's, it is, um, the workshop as they said at the time would be available on the FCM website. Um, I have yet to find where it is on the website, but I did take a lot of notes and I'm planning on getting more information because I really think that that would be something that um, each of us should take another look at. I found it so informative. The other, as an aside, I've heard about, you know, the networking that happens, uh, but I did meet a counselor from a small town called Vermilion in Alberta and they are similar to us in that they're a smaller town with um, a secondary education, post-secondary education facility there, and they have, um, that she spoke with me about a disjoint that they have between their town and their gown. So um, I was able to give her some contact information um, because I'm pretty proud of the initiatives that have happened within our town over the past years in bringing Mount Allison and Sackville closer together. So I've been able to um, put her in touch with um, Mr. Burke and, and hopefully we'll be able to share some of the information we found out with them to assist them in building a relationship between, between their, um, their, their uh, community college and, and their town. So that's just a small bit of, of what I learned. Thank you both. Um, I'd just like to follow up on um, uh, Councillor Black's question about reconciliation. I think that uh, the town has picked up the concept of 150 plus, which is recognition of the First Nations role in, in Canada. And um, the reconciliation concept comes from the, tr the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. And uh, one of its major recommendations was that people most Canadians don't simply understand the history of Aboriginal people, First Nations people in this in this country, um, and how long it is, and uh, their contributions to Canada. And they had asked, as one of the the um, ways to educate people and to show the respect for that, was for groups to open their meetings with a recognition of the traditional people of that territory. 
those who have been to Mount Allison know they open it with that. that. Uh, FCM was opened with a very, very strong um, uh, opening uh, statement from um, Ms. Commander, who is uh, from Quebec, although I thought that was a Serpent River name, but uh, she was from Quebec, and she was very strong. And several of the corporate entities that spoke uh, uh, also did their own uh, opening remark about where recognizing the people and the territories on which they stood that day. Uh, it was very powerful. Um, very powerful to see the corporate people say that uh, as well. Coincidentally, as we were leaving uh, at the airport in Moncton, uh, I ran into the New Brunswick Regional Chief of the AFN, and uh, we renewed acquaintances. And um, uh, I, I guess I'm asking for Council's direction here as to whether I should reach out and ask him for some advice on this topic um, in terms of what type of a Activity, what type of protocol we might want to consider, and then bring it back for discussion over uh, whether this is something we want to do, and if it is, how you, what you want to actually have say. Um, so I'm open to that. If anybody wants to give me some feedback on that, and just one last uh, point, uh, Councillor Black, you stood in for me at the Arts Atlantic Arts Association. And is there any comment you want to make about that that particular event? Um, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I will say that I was incredibly nervous to be standing up in front of people and, and, uh, and uh, giving an address on behalf of the town, but um, at the FCM there was a, kind of a, a pretty terrible discussion actually on um, innovation and economic development, but one of the things that they had talked about was how municipalities were pushing uh, the ideas of arts and culture and, and selling that in, in for communities, small communities particularly, um, who didn't have a lot of economic strength other than their arts and culture community. So when I went to the uh, Art Association um, and the annual general meeting at Strutt's uh, Gallery when they opened it, um, I had just uh, welcomed everyone on behalf of the town and, and had said that, uh, you know, if, if other municipalities across Canada and the FCM had, had uh, push this idea of arts and culture that uh, Sackville was certainly um, ahead of the game. So, but anyway, I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun and I got to see some pretty interesting art, but it was great. Thank you. Uh, so that's my, our direct mayor's report, but if, if you're okay, I would like to ask for one more extension, which is Councillor Finney attended zone two meetings on our behalf. And uh, I'd like to ask him to say a couple of words about the event. <laughs> um, started off with a presentation by uh, Robert Fawcett, who's the director of corporate relations for the forestry. Robert Fawcett, for, pe for people who don't know who he is, he used to own Fawcett uh, Lumber in Petticodiac, and he sold to the Irvings, and now he works for them uh, as a... Um, uh, he goes around and presents and works on deals and things. But his presentation was on the software lumber industry, and uh, he gave a lot of great statistics, as a matter of fact. Um, for instance, the, I'm trying to think here, I've got some stuff here. Uh, New Brunswick, for instance, he says, is only about 2.1% of the U.S. forest lumber industry. The software lumber consumption in 2015. New Brunswick is not important to the U.S. lumber industry, but Canada is. They represent about 30%. The history of maritime exclusion on duties is 35 years of paying no duty. And they're hoping to turn around and continue that because it's just too much of a cost to do otherwise. Uh, there was a lumber trade case, key dates. Now, I didn't quite understand that, but the January 19th was investigated, company selected. March 19th, company uh, questionnaire response due. The CVD preliminary duty rate announced, the anti-dumping preliminary duty rate determination, and in November, December was the final determination expected CVD and AD. These are things that are going on now because the talks between, uh, between Canada and the U.S. at the present time. Uh, so I guess we'll have to wait and see exactly what happens then. There was the Atlantic Mayor's Conference. A resolution was made up. 
and it was recommended that municipal council should consider resolutions in reference to softwood lumber industry. Even if you don't have a mill in your community, your community is, will be impacted because of the products that are being made and sold across Canada and in the world today. Uh, there's one uh, individual, Canadian, Mr. Wilkins. He's the former ambassador to the U.S. Uh, he happens to be championing the forest and uh, the lumber industry right now in Canada. Um, Mr. Fawcett also gave me a lot of handouts, which I'll just pass around to each and everybody after. I could read each one of them if you want. I mean, for instance, okay, in Chipman, $76 million invested in 2012-2016, including 2014 mill modernization. The jobs in 2016 in Chipman, the direct jobs were 350, indirect was 839. The third shift added at Sawmill and Planter Mill. JDI recorded breaking, uh, breaking wood purchase in New Brunswick 2016-17, up 31% over last year at 864,000 square meters. 2017 to 19, hiring forecast, Grand Lake Timber, 56. That's Chip, to Chipman Woodlands. 2017 to 2019, hiring forecast, Chipman Woodlands, 96. I'll say what happens in Sussex. $3.4 million invested in Sussex Research Lab. The jobs for 2016, sawmills and woodlands, direct 206. Indirect, 582. Capital investment, $11 million between 2012 and 2016. JDI record-breaking wood purchases in New Brunswick, 16, 17. Of course, again, 31% over last year. Uh, the hiring forecast for between 2017 and 19 in Sussex, the Sussex Sawmill and Chip Plant, there'll be 27. Southern New Brunswick Woodlands, 91. Nearly $70 million in wages in the community, direct and indirect. And I could go on about the last back pages, but. Uh, they've done some record-breaking private wood purchases. And the ADI wants to thank hundreds of New Brunswick private wood producers and woodlawn owners who made the 16, 17, operating year a record-breaking season for purchased wood. Um, because of the 30% increase, that's about 23,000 tractor trailer loads of private wood, beating our previous record of 685,000 cubic meters, which I just said was 860,000 cubic meters. Uh, the past six years, JDI has worked with hundreds of private producers and woodlot owners to more than double our private wood purchase volume. Because of this, wood from privately owned land represents 53% of the wood supply for our New Brunswick mills. They value the partnership and private wood is an essential supply for the mills, our employees and our customers. And they continue, they will continue to work hard to secure a sustainable future for our businesses and our private wood partners. I got it in French too if anybody needs it. <laughs> and the other statement was here, now is not the time to play politics. A statement by the New Brunswick lumber producers. As members of of the New Brunswick Lumber Producer, we are united in expressing our concern about incorrect statements by David Kuhn, an elected representative that may jeopardize the historic maritime exclusion from duties on softwood lumber shipped to the United States. Mr. Kuhn needs to understand how important the facts are to, these, to the survival of our mills as well as the people and communities that depend on them. The 11 members of the New Brunswick Lumber Producers represent 95% of softwood exports to the, exports to the U.S. from the province and we account for over 4,100 direct and indirect jobs. We are, we are all firmly together in proving that our historic 35-year exemption should be maintained. We have worked together with all maritime lumber producers in Newfoundland and Labrador for more than 35 years until Nova Scotia made the decision to leave our group in December 2016. We continue to believe that all lumber producers in Atlantic Canada should work together to pursue the historic maritime exclusion. Mr. Kuhn suggests that JDI Irving Limited, JDI, left New Brunswick producers behind to go it alone in volunteering to be reviewed by the U.S. Department of Commerce. They went and turned around and some of the companies were asked to be audited. Some of them decided not to at all, but JDI, they decided to turn around and allow themselves to be audited and it took 9,000 pages to put it together at a great expense. They said they had nothing to hide and that's why they did it. Over 400 companies 
could have applied to be reviewed, some similar in size, some smaller or larger than JDI. The JDI was the only company in Canada to apply. Our hope is JDI's work will provide a foundation to support the exclusion of all New Brunswick sawmills from any duties at the U.S. border. Unfortunately, the New Brunswick sawmillers have been hit with a 19.88% rate that is the Canadian average and doesn't reflect the forestry system in New Brunswick. The 3.02% GDI rate is the best evidence that we all have to show that we operate in a free and fair market and that we should be excluded from U.S. duties. We want New Brunswickers to know that our industry has and can stand together. We need all elected officials to share this commitment. We should all focus on the facts and supporting the people and communities who depend on New Brunswick forest industry. There's a name of companies there and everything. Uh, Just, I think, Councillor Black has a question for you. Sure. Uh, well, it's, it's actually not a question, it's more of a statement, but um, when we were at the FCM, there were four resolutions that were passed, and one of them was about free and fair trade on softwood lumber. Um, Canadian municipalities have been pushing for the FCM to represent them uh, in working with the federal government to support the interests of municipalities across Canada that were directly impacted by the U.S. countervailing duties. And one of the councillors, I believe he was, and I can't remember where he was from, but he was from northern B.C., um, had traveled to the FCM, and in the time that, in the time in between him booking his appointment, or sorry, his um, uh, FCM uh, membership or whatever, his flights and stuff, uh, he lost his job because he worked in a sawmill uh, in the small town and hired 200 people uh, in, his, in his town for the sawmill and they all lost their jobs and he came to the FCM to represent anyway and stood up in, in support of it. Uh, in the end, the resolution passed, I think it was 96 or 97 percent, um, which was great um, for Canadian lumber um, but another representative from BC stood up and said that this was just scratching the surface, that there would be more that would need to be done um, with the sort of socioeconomic impact of lumber, um, planting trees, uh, cutting down trees while planting three more, um, ecotourism, all of that stuff that sort of, uh, that Canada has in abundance. Um, but anyway, so I, there is a push by the FCM to represent municipalities across Canada for that very issue. So hopefully that. Um, Councilor Penny, any other issues you wanted to raise from Zone 2 for us? Uh, the thing is, is that actually with Raymond's report, uh, there was, uh, uh, you asked me to turn around uh, uh, to find out exactly where our resolutions are. They've been forwarded to, to be on the agenda for the AGM. Um, the other, what was it I turned around? I wrote down. I talked about the asset management plan. Some of the communities felt that that was and hard to do and impossible, but I believe in last month's report, you, I think the CAO reported that actually there's money available, 80%, they'll pay up to 80%. I didn't really remember that at the time, so I'll communicate it to these people. Uh, there is, was also that uh, the mayors of the provincial mayors want to meet at least twice a year with the Premier. And when Raymond presented this to the people in New Brunswick local government, they turned around and asked, well, why? Well, because Raymond said, because the Premier, is the he's the last one that actually is there. You know, he's, and so that's why they said they wanted to meet with him, and hopefully that's going to come about. Um, there is... There's an, um, the Memorandum of Understanding. It's to be signed in St. John. If everybody agrees to it, I didn't catch the date, but it's coming up soon. Um, is, is, that, to... is that the one we had yes. recommended? Yeah. Yes, oh, that's perfect. what I understood, as a matter of fact. And the other thing that actually was mentioned is that, uh, actually, if I can go back to Robert Fawcett, he also mentioned about the hiring of immigrants and uh, and he, uh, he believes that actually that uh, we should really look into considering this 
whole proposal and under trying to understand exactly about immigrants and refugees. So it's been recommended that actually councils or the towns invite MAGMA to come forward and do some presentations, which they've already done in some communities already, so that people will have an understanding of exactly what it is. I mean, I mean, we have some preconceived ideas about refugees and immigrants, and I think they could probably dispel some of these some of these things that are, people are thinking right now and actually getting people to understand exactly what immigrants and refugees are really all about and why, and, um, and why they're needed in the forest industry along with others um, and other industries as well, but also to, to turn around and actually, but if we're going to bring them here, we also turn around and have to make them welcome, and, but we figure MAGMA could be probably a good group in order to turn around and do so. Uh, there was just a few more things, Your Worship. Uh, one of the other issues, as a matter of fact, that was brought up again on sightly premises. Um, it's been brought up many, many times. Um, people, there was a counselor from Riverview asked, well, why is this issue continuing to be you know, hashed over and hashed over? And it was, it was assumed because of the fact that it was being brought to the local government that the people who work in, in the local government have never worked in municipalities. So they know nothing about the hardships or the problems that we have with on site premises. So how would they understand, they can't understand exactly what we're trying to get through to them. Hopefully it will be taken care of in the, in the uh, new municipal plan and everything. Um, and if there's resolutions that people want to make in relation to the forest industry, we can do that. And if we need any help with it, Raymond said that reach out to him and he can give us some examples of it. And that could be done through there. Um, The, I think the other thing that was put forward was the, I'm trying to find it now. The, um, I believe that it was one of the resolutions we have, it's being pre, it was sent to the FCM, and I think that's the CN one? Yes. Okay. That's what he had mentioned there as well. Okay. Uh, there's a few other things. I mean, I mean, they're talking about immigrants and maritime exclusion. Uh, the other thing is, is I mean, there was nominations for directors and alternates. The new directors, uh, directors, uh, nomination director was Terry, Lori, Tanya, and Bev. Voted with Terry and Tanya for directors now. Uh, Jerry Gauguin has now resigned, moved aside, stepped aside. And nominations for alternates were Robert, Lori, and Jim, and voted were Lori and Jim. And Jim is Jim Campbell from Riverside, Albert. And Lori, I don't know which one she was, to tell you the truth. But uh, they also said, as a matter of fact, if we're going to bring, when we bring refugees and immigrants in, we have to turn around and make them welcome. They have to turn around and also try to get more than one family and try to get them to stay. But that's going to needed to be done by pre maybe bringing in two or three families at a time. Some of the smaller communities are having a hard time being able to afford it because as Jerry Gauguin said in Petty Kodiak, they brought a family in and it was only about three months and they moved and uh, so they lost them again. So we have to find a way of doing that. That's why it was suggested that magma might be a good thing. There's one other thing. Their JDI, Rubber Fawcett and them are putting on a multicultural diversity presentation this Friday in Chipman. Where in Chipman, I didn't, he didn't say, or I didn't catch, and at what time. But it's, it's probably going to be a sort of an all-day event, and the invite is out to anybody who wishes to go up there, and Robert said that he would pay for lunch. So. Okay, thank you. I think Councilor that's about it. If anybody has any questions, I'd, I'd suggest we do that by email or directly to Councilor Finney, just because my mayor's report took a lot longer than I anticipated <laughs> today. So. Uh, Okay, so that's it for the mayor's report section, and we move over to the CAO's report, please. Thank you, Worship. Uh, members of the council, the report's in 21 in your packages, and uh, kind of at the staff level, it's been a busy month, and I won't uh, go into a lot of the details because you'll hear those in the forthcoming uh, reports from each of the various departments. Um, as most of you know, though, we'll, um, the, in the infrastructure project did get underway in Lawrence Street, and I'll just comment briefly on that. And 
it's good to see the project uh, started. Unfortunately, we did get off to a bit of a rough start with uh, some water issues, but uh, they were uh, handled well given the circumstances of uh, adhering to the provincial regulations that need to be adhered to in terms of a boil order need to, needing to be in place in 48 hours uh, to get the two free clear samples, but better safe than sorry to than to be running a risk of uh, adversely impacting on people's health. So uh, um, not the start we wanted, but I congratulate the staff and uh, our, our consultants and contractors in the manner that it did get handled at the end of the day. Uh, also pleased uh, last week to have the report from our auditors in terms of the positive uh, report in our financial uh, well-being and, um, and more importantly from my perspective at least in terms of our processes and procedures uh, being in place uh, and being administered uh, uh, proficiently as well uh, by our staff. So uh, I want to thank my staff uh, in, in their due diligence in managing the uh, taxpayers' dollars. Uh, I too wish to thank the town for providing me the opportunity to attend the annual CAMA conference in Gatineau and uh, there was a number of uh, good sessions and ideas and as, as uh, councillors have indicated it's always good to be able to discuss with other people from across the country to learn from uh, them and, and uh, hear their ideas but uh, we too can share our good ideas as well so it goes both ways and uh, it, was a, it was a good conference. So thank you for that and as the mayor had indicated uh, we did have an opportunity to meet with CN uh, while we were there uh, and uh, meet with their senior people and their organization to bring them up to speed on uh, some of the issues that we were encountering here around the Lawrence Street project but as well the flooding project and uh, some of the information that they need to step up and uh, address some of their own concerns and uh, I think uh, I, well it was said to us that they were very pleased to receive the information that we provided uh, it was informative for them, and, uh, and as the mayor indicated, uh, uh, we left there uh, with a very positive uh, feeling in terms of the support, the support that uh, they're willing to work with us and uh, look to try and address the, uh, the issues in, in the, uh, during the near future. So with that, Your Worship, that's my report, and if there's any concerns or questions, I'd uh, do my best to try and answer them for you. Any questions of CAO? Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, uh, report number S report C, finance and admin. Councillor Aiken, you or Deputy Mayor Aiken, sorry. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'll first do the bills and payrolls, and then move into the uh, report, and then motions from it. Uh, I move the council accept the bills and payrolls for the month of May 2017 as follows: General Government, eight hundred and fifty thousand ninety-one dollars and eighty-eight cents. General Capital, $39,825.96. Utility Government, $324,322.84. Utility Capital, $32,349.50. And Salaries, $197,470.48. Moved by Deputy Mayor Aiken, seconded by Councillor Black. Questions? Those in favor? Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you, Worship. The um, report appears on page 24 of the package, and as I go down it, I see that the between the mayor and CAO, they stole most of my thunder on this one. So, um, uh, the financial statements are included to May 31st, and uh, as usual, there are no major anomalies. And we, finance department monitors all financial affairs on a daily basis. Um, the auditors have completed the 2016 audit and was presented to council at the June 5th special council meeting. And I have motions coming up about the audit. And the audit showed that we have a general revenue surplus of $64,316 and a utility revenue surplus of $21,083. And these are carried forward to next year's budget as revenue. Uh, we, at our May meeting, we approved the asset management plan, and shortly after we'd done this, the FCM and SEM announced that funding um, to the Minister of Health is to help in this area. And as a result of this funding announcement, we are applying for funding to cover the plan um, that will cover up to 80% of the total cost. 
and unfortunately, you can't start and we can't start a plan until we hear about this uh, funding. So it could be a few weeks. So we're delaying the creation of the plan in hopes of getting some money um, from the FCM. Um, water billing was due on May 15th, and staff send it, will send out reminder notices uh, early this month. Uh, prior shot off letters from 2016 are continuing to be reviewed uh, from October 2016. And as of May 1st, we collected $102,640.31. And finally, the town, again, would like to thank Frank Cowan uh, Company and Sears Insurance for their donation toward the lookout in the Sacro Waterfowl Park. Um, Cowan donated $5,000 and Sears Insurance donated $2,500. And um, if there are any questions on the report, I'll refer them to our treasurer. Hearing none. Okay. Uh, I move the council approve the 2016 audit as presented by Stevenson and Partners LLP and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign and seal the audit. Moved by Deputy Mayor Aiken, seconded by Councillor O'Neill. Motion? Uh, question? <laughs> question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move with the council to appoint Stevenson and Partners LLP out of Riverview, New Brunswick as our auditors for the, <clears throat> for the year 2017. Moved by Deputy Mayor Aiken, seconded by Councilor Finney. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. And the uh, report for uh, the bylaw enforcement appears on page 29. And um, the animal control report is on page 30. And I'll just note on the animal report is a call on a DOA ground hound. Yes. I have no idea what that might be. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm assuming groundhog. Uh, <laughs> and I have uh, some motions pertaining to these. I move that whereas council has adopted various bylaws and whereas the municipality wishes to ensure the proper enforcement of its bylaws by appointing an appropriate person to such position, now therefore be it resolved that the following person is hereby authorized, designated, and appointed to act for and on council's behalf in order to properly enforce all of the municipality's by bylaws pursuant to the municipality's authority outlined below. Joshua Best, Tristan Jonah, and Brooke Wilson, effective June 12, 2017. Be it further resolved that the above noted authorization designation and appointment is subject to the following, 92-1, 93-1, 94-1, and 98 of the Community Planning Act in order to enter upon property, issue orders, seek orders from the Court of Queen's Bench, and commence proceedings in provincial court. 100.2B, 101, 101, 102.11, and 190.013 of the Municipalities Act in order to serve tickets, commence proceedings in provincial court, enter upon property, and issue notices for dangerous or unsightly premises. And 14 of the Police Act in order to serve tickets and properly execute their role as a bylaw enforcement officer. Be it further resolved that the above noted authorization, designation, and appointment shall continue until the person ceases to be employed by the municipality or until the appointment is limited or rescinded by council. Moved by. Deputy Mayor Aiken, seconded by Councillor Tower. Question? Question? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. End of your report? Excellent. We shall move on to tourism and business development. Who is Deputy Mayor Aiken? Thank you, Your Worship. Um, The uh, report appears on page 31 of the package, and um, I'm going to highlight a few points out of it. Community Development, Economic Development Corporation presentation by Jeff Harriman, um, a senior uh, analyst for capital markets, uh, was held on May 3rd. Uh, it was apparently a good meeting with about 20 people in attendance. Uh, the Border Town Festival ran May 4th to 7th and was the most successful uh, Border Town yet. Uh, with a lot of positive feedback and a full report with, uh, to, will be presented to Council at the July meeting. Uh, the Sackville Chamber of Commerce held an information session in May to, to begin the process of re-establishing the Chamber 
A provisional board is being developed and is reported that the chamber has enough money now to cover all its past debt. And Festival 506 representatives had a site visit in May. You recall this is a music festival. Um, it was last held in Mirror Machine. And we'll know soon if we have been chosen as a site for 2018. Um, there are many plans and activities for the, the VIC and in town related to tourism this summer. Uh, tours of the Waterfowl Park, downtown and Beach Hill Park, food tours, Waterfowl Park expert day programs for young people, the Waterfowl Artists and Residents, and a familiarization tour with local business and frontline workers. I'd also like to add that the, um, as been mentioned before, uh, yesterday afternoon we had this uh, film session on 13 ways to kill your community. And uh, it was uh, councillors, uh, Councillor Finney, myself, and the mayor were there. Um, and it was an excellent session. The uh, guy that gave it was a guy named Robert Griffiths from um, Alberta. And he took sort of reverse psychology and went through and said, this is the way if you want to make sure your town will die, this is what you should do. And um, I think everybody's sitting there going, oh, God, we do that stuff. So it was uh, quite an enlightening session. It was followed by a um, session by Robert Cervetti or Cervelli? Cervelli um, uh, from a uh, local uh, community economic growth initiative in uh, Nova Scotia who had several ideas about how to um, sort of promote growth from the ground up. Uh, and one of his major things was, uh, as Councillor uh, Black mentioned, um, uh, agriculture and uh, food initiatives. And one idea he had that you might add to your um, uh, list is uh, a community greenhouse where people that wanted to grow plant, you know, for their own gardens could start them earlier in the year in one big greenhouse that everybody sort of paid a few bucks to um, be part of. And that is the report, Your Worship. I have no motion. Any questions on the report? Nope. There are no motions with that, so we shall move on to uh, public property and facilities. Councillor Tower. Thank you, Your Worship. The information is on page 33 through to 35. <clears throat> public Works Department completed the majority of the work on the new booster pump building with the installation of the new building, concrete pad, new water distribution system, and new asphalt parking area landscaping around the facility. There are a few deficiencies which will be finished up shortly. And the booster pump water is tested on a regular basis for public safety. During the month of May, Public Works Department started to evaluate road conditions and make necessary repairs to the uh, road shoulders, ditching, culverts, and any other necessary uh, repairs to the roadway. Public Works Department started to work on, additional, on the addition to the back of the steel storage building in the Public Works. The footing has been installed uh, with, for the support beams and the material has been ordered and this work will continue through the summer as uh, time permits. This is all being done by the Public Works staff. The hiring of five Public Works students and one engineering student took place in the month of May. Uh, and so we like to welcome the students for the summer because uh, they will be a great addition to the staff. Public Works uh, was uh, hired uh, Ross Wood, Joe Tower, Paxton Clare, Jesse Wint uh, Wheaton, and James Gorman, and an engineering student is Tim Soper. Public Works started to repair, uh, uh, started repairs in addition of the storm drainage system in the Waterfowl Park Trail uh, beside the uh, Drew Nursing Home where the trail continues to suffer when you get heavy rains. Uh, this work will alleviate that problem for the future. Patching program for 2017 during the month of May is uh, have been going around with uh, limited by some poor conditions but uh, they have since picked up the pace and uh, Saw them putting in a pretty big patch there on uh, Ogden Mill there, just around the corner, going up to... Yeah, that's it, thank you. I knew you'd help me with that one. <laughs> Public Works staff conducted installation of several driveway culverts uh, that were required throughout the town during the month of May. Public Works staff has finished putting out the park benches and bike racks all around the town. 
Oh, wonder we don't have time. I mean, yeah. the utility department continues to work on the evaluation of water meters that did not read properly during the March uh, water meter read. Uh, they have been worked throughout the month of April and May, fixing and replacing water meters in the MX units, MXU units, in order to obtain the proper water meter reads. They have rectified all but on the list except for nine remaining. Other utilities uh, activities in May include the ongoing monitoring of our water and wastewater system and around the town as part of their ongoing sampling program. The utility department has been involved with both contractors on the Lawrence Street Re <coughs> reconstruction and storm mitigation projects and assisting in the shutdown uh, of water in order to facilitate the hookup of new water infrastructures as part of the, these projects, as well as the temporary water on both of these contracts. The engineering department has been working with uh, WSP to finalize the design and drawings for the Bridge Street uh, reconstruction. Uh, and the lift station project is uh, scheduled to start as soon as the design and all permits have been obtained uh, and approved by the Department of Environment and Local Government. Uh, the engineering department continues to work with Crandall Engineering Limited on the design of the Lawrence Street construction and storm mitigation uh, project. The two tenders, 2017-2 and 2017-3, uh, for phase one of these projects uh, were awarded in May to Dexter Construction and Bowser uh, Construction, respectfully. Uh, respectfully. Uh, the work on both tenders got underway on May 9th. Uh, construction of these two tenders will continue all summer and into late fall. The engineering department issued a tender for one used articulating boom lift in, on March 31st, which was closed April 19th and was awarded during the regular council meeting uh, in May. The boom has been received and being put uh, to use right away in the work at the Civic Center uh, and banner installation around the town as well so that will be followed by flower uh, baskets being hung. At the Ben Memorial Center, the month of May saw several events at the Civic Center as the Rod and Gun Club meeting and barbecue, 50 plus aerobics, lacrosse, Eastern gymnastics competition with 700 athletes, first aid training, ball hockey, team party, Ducks Unlimited, and minor ball meetings. The Civic Center has hosted once again the successful conference with uh, United Church Conference, that must be, um, with approximately 750 delegates. The staff have started the maintenance of the, uh, for the summer, such as painting dress rooms, uh, saw cutting uh, the floor uh, for the Zamboni room uh, to stop the frost from lifting the interior wall. Can you give us some background on that, if you would, Todd, please? Uh, when the, uh, the brine lines were installed in the rink when it was originally built, they didn't insulate the line underneath the floor, which runs underneath the interior wall. Over several years, you've noticed the lift on the inside wall. You can see the buckling of the siding. We've cut the concrete out, dug around the pipe, and we're going to insulate it and then put a false floor over top of it made out of lumber, similar to what's over by the Zamboni where it comes out onto the ice so that when the frost comes up again, it'll either lift the boards or else we can melt it down so it won't lift the wall any longer. Uh, the staff have reviewed the current lease with the Southeast Regional Adult Learning Board for the use of the space at the uh, center, uh, presented the revised lease agreement to the council on May 5th for our review. A motion will be coming for that tonight, looking for approval of the lease. The hiring of five park and facility students took place in May. I'd like to welcome the students. Uh, they will be a big addition, of course, for the summer months. Do get busy. The students are as followed. Michael Bowen, Jarrett Morrissey, William Lafford, Kyle Cadman, and Colin Hilchey, with four uh, high school students coming at the end of June. Uh, the potable water has been uh, on turned on and tested at Beach Hill Park for the season. The water will be tested on a regular basis by the Public Works 
staff. Two washrooms are now open at the public, uh, for the public at Lilas Fawcett Park, and the dock has been installed. The washrooms are open at the uh, for the public in the Bill Johnson Memorial Park, and these uh, washrooms are open for 24 hours a day. Uh, sports field are now open for the public. Uh, staff installed banners and will be installing flower baskets as they arrive in mid-June. And for bookings of the sports field or a spot in one of the parks for an event, send your request to bookings at sackville.com. And if, any questions? Otherwise, I have a motion. Deputy Mayor Aiken. Thank you, Worship. I've uh, seen a couple times online people asking when the water is going to be turned on at the splash pad. Uh, we're having a technical difficulty and a technician is coming in on Wednesday actually to take a look at it. Um, we've tried with the local electrician. It's some little glitch. We're not sure what it is, but uh, hopefully by the end of the week we have it resolved or at least a part order so we can get it resolved. I just have a question for clarity. One of the points spoke of uh, Bridge Street Reconstruction and Lift Station Project. Is that, uh, is that accurate, Bridge Street Reconstruction, or is that? Thank, thank you. It, it's the Bridge Street Lift Station, but it is reconstruction at the end of Bridge Street where the lift station will be added. Um, of course, there's water and sewer extension that's going to be done. So it's the end of Bridge Street, not the Bridge Street as in the project downtown Bridge Street, it's uh, out at the end of Bridge Street. But it is it is part of Bridge Street at the very end. Okay, thank so you. So from Crescent Street um, to the end is the section that's going to be uh, done under this uh, lift station slash reconstruction project. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? No. Okay, I have a motion now, Your Worship. Okay. I move that Council authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign and seal the agreement with the Southeast Regional Adult Learning Board in order to provide space for the adult learning within the Tantamar Vet Veterans Memorial Civic Center. Moved by Councillor Towers, seconded by Councillor Evans. And question? Question. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. I am done, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Tower. Move to item F, report number F, uh, programs and events. Councillor Butcher. Thank you. Um, so uh, the report can be found on page 36, 37, and 38. Um, some highlights. The Street Chalk Festival celebrating Canada's 150 plus years will take place August 25th to 26th. And uh, Chalkmaster Dave Johnston, who did the uh, fabulous the thing that was down in front of the Salvation Army will be back and there's going to be live music and uh, several other artists, children's activities and all kinds of great stuff so stay tuned for that. The antique car show that was scheduled for July 22nd has been cancelled um, because the organizer received a new job that's affected his ability, his availability <laughs> and maybe his ability so uh, he, he won't be putting that on. Um, for June being Recreation and Parks Month, our co-op student Thomas Campbell did um, a Grandparents' Day at Bill Johnston Park and a Seniors Walk and Talk event at Beach Hill Park, and both were very well attended, so congratulations to him. Um, our full summer program and events guide is now on, it's online at sackville.com, so there's, um, and there will be printed copies going into the school system soon, so there's, there's plenty of returning favorites and also some new ones, so people should check that out. Um, Canada 150 Canada Day events will be starting at noon on July 1st at the Bill Johnstone Memorial Park and this year's musical entertainment will be provided by the Sackville Citizens Band who are celebrating their 115th year and there will be of course activities for all ages. Um, the Beach Hill Park Challenge will be held on July 29th and uh, just as an aside there will be some great draw prizes including a $650 bike voucher from the Bicycle Specialist in Amherst. Um, uh, Operation Beautification took place on May 10th and uh, there was 15, more than 15 groups and businesses who took part in this year's event so that was very, very well uh, attended. Um, and there's a private awards reception being held on June 29th to honour this year's volunteer award recipients. 
Uh, we have three receiving Decade of Dedication Award, Matt Estabrooks, Lou Lamb, and Brenda Allen. Uh, Long-term service awards will be going to Paul Bogard, Elaine Smith, Janet Geyer, Joan Kant, Sheila Parker, Patricia Lafford, and David and Diane Fullerton. And the Golden Long-Term Service Award, which is for 50 years, goes to Joyce O'Neill and uh, Alan Pooley as well. And uh, this year we have a new achievement award that's called the Titan Community Achievement Award and that is going to Olivia Tower. And nomination process has closed for the Arts Wall Induction Ceremony for 2017 and those nominations will be reviewed over the summer and the ceremony is booked for October 1st. Um, as people have probably already heard, our 17th Fall Fair will take place this 17th, or the 14th to the 17th of September and um, there will be a newly revamped family day at Doncaster Farm. Uh, staff has been in discussions with Ocean Trail Source for Adventure. Um, that's a company that's interested in operating kayak rental business and offering programs on Silver Lake this summer. So more details will be presented on that in July. And staff is working with Wild Wonder to operate a forest preschool at Beach Hill Park during the month of June. Uh, and that is the report and I have um, I have some motions as well so um, I move that council grant permission to the fall fair organizing committee to operate a bar service in a secured area in the main stage tent on Friday September 15th 2017 and Saturday, September 16th, 2017, subject to provincial liquor and safety laws. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Deputy Mayor Aiken. <laughs> Question? Question? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move that Council grant a time exemption from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. as per bylaw number 246, the Town of Sackville Noise Bylaw, Section 5, for the Fall Fair activities to be held on Friday, September 15th, 2017, and Saturday, September 16th, 2017. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Tower. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Councillor Butcher. I move that Council grant the temporary street closure of the portion of Ford Lane from behind the post office to the York Street entrance on Friday, September 15th, 2017, beginning, beginning at 7 a.m. until Sunday, September 17th, 2017 at 9 p.m. in order to facilitate the installation and use of a tent for community events during the fall fair. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor O'Neill. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move that Council authorize the closure of Main Street from King Street to Queens Road and Queens Road from Main Street to Salem Street on Saturday, September 16th, 2017 from approximately 12.30 p.m. to 2 p.m. for the Fall Fair Parade. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Mitten. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move that Council authorize the Fire Chief as part of the Fall Fair events to complete an application to purchase with MAC Fireworks Incorporated for a commercially organized and operated fireworks display at the Tantrum Regional High School Lower Field on Friday, September 15, 2017 in the amount of $7,999 HST included. I furthermore authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign and seal the necessary agreement for the said event. Moved by Councilor Butcher, seconded by Councilor Finney. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move that Council authorize the Mayor and Clerk to sign and seal an agreement between the Town of Sackville and Mount Allison University stipulating that Mount Allison University grants to the Town of Sackville the right to utilize the grassed property west of King Street parking lot to allow Bounce Kingdom party rentals and Ground Zero laser tag access to the field on Friday, September 15th, 2017 up to and including Sunday, September 17th, 2017. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Evans. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. I move that Council award a grant of $3,000 to Kristen Doncaster for the 2017 Family Day at Doncaster Farm event from the Recreation Programs and Events Fall Fair budget. Second. By Council Butcher, seconded by <laughs> Councilor O'Neill. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. 
I move that council authorize the closure of Bridge Street from Lawrence Street to Main Street from Friday, August 25th, 2017 at 12 noon to Sunday, August 27th, 2017 at 12 noon to accommodate the Sackville Street Chalk Art Festival celebrating Canada's 150 plus. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Mitten. Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. And my last motion. I move that Council approve the use of $3,711.02 from the Special Populations Account and to also approve of a $5,000 deposit on the purchase of the Christiana Bike Model 5001 in the amount of $7,192.50 euro from Copenhagen Cycles. Second. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Finney. Councillor Evans? Yeah. Uh, perhaps we could get some clarification perhaps from the treasurer on just the implications of the, the funding and what may or may not actually be expended. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Evans. The, uh, the, uh, the $3,711 comes from fund that has been uh, set up on our books uh, since uh, pre-my my date in 1993. Um, and uh, so the total cost of the bike uh, would... Uh, We'll run about 10,000 Canadian uh, with the euro in the exchange. Um, we will be paying a deposit of 5,000 uh, with the balance to be paid once we receive the bike. Uh, so the so once we take away the 3,700, we'll still have 6,300, of which, as discussed at the uh, at the uh, discussion at the special council meeting, there's been a few donations received. Um, so the maximum net cost to the town, uh, as far as expenses go for the year uh, would be in the range of, uh, I think, $4,000. 2000 2000 So, uh, So if, if there's no more fundraising received, but they are still looking at other, other places. Thank you, Mr. Beal. Any other questions? Question? Those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Oh. No, I'm not opposed. I have nothing. <laughs> I want to say thanks. So the motion is, is carried. Councillor O'Neill. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, just going back to the uh, antique car show that was scheduled for July the 22nd, which has been cancelled. I just want to ensure everybody knows that the uh, antique car show is a separate event than the one we have during the fall fair. And this year we are having, it'll be our 10th annual. So we're looking for a, a big do on that. And I just wanted to make sure everybody realized that the fall fair car show was a separate one from the one that is being canceled. Same place. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yep, yeah, being the Baptist Church. Thanks for that clarification. And just uh, for, we went through a lot of material there. I just want, for those who are, are going to be picking this up off of the web or on, uh, on broadcast, that we had extensive discussions about this at the discussion meeting where each of these were di discussed in detail with staff and what the implications were. So it, uh, it allows us to move quicker, but we, we sometimes may look like we haven't given this much thought, but there was an extensive amount, and you can go on to our website and listen to the audio of the specifics on uh, those discussion of each one of those. Thank you. We would move to uh, public safety, and Councillor O'Neill. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Terrible when he's even forgetting my name already. Uh, the Cycle Fire and Rescue had, uh, they responded to 15 calls during for service in the month of May, uh, in which included four uh, commercial fire alarms, three motor vehicle collisions, two structure fires, two smoke in residence, one utility pole fire, one strange smell in a residence, <laughs> one apartment fire, and one call for assistance from the RCMP. The calls for service to date in, uh, in 2017 the calls are up 19 calls compared to the same time frame as last year. Uh, the uh, fire department, they still continue their training sessions, um, which involves classroom presentations on firefighting nozzles. They also do uh, demonstrations, equipment and orientations, and truck companies and station equipment checks. They currently have uh, 43 professional volunteer firefighters and when they also have three new pros prospective members which are on a waiting list. 
they're going to slow, let the things kind of slow down a little bit for the members during uh, during June and uh, through the summer just to make it a little easier so that they can spend more time with their families. And uh, they really uh, want everybody to realize that their annual truck draw tickets are out and around, so they're encouraging everyone to start uh, thinking about buying some of those to support them. Uh, and also the chief also uh, sends out a reminder that rubbish fires are strictly prohibited within the town limits. And he also reminds residents to ensure that they have a basic emergency kit prepared for s at least 72 hours. That's all the report. If there's any questions, I'm sure the chief would be glad to answer them. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Worship. It's not a question, but I'd like to um, publicly acknowledge the members of the fire department. I unfortunately had occasion to call them this weekend uh, for a uh, incident at my place, um, and I, yeah, don't I wish? Um, I was, uh, our fire department is second to none. Uh, I called 911, and uh, Walter Allen was on my doorstep in under five minutes, and the rest of the department was there shortly thereafter and had the problem taken care of within about, I think an hour later, they were all gone. And I would just want to congratulate them on their speed, professionalism, and just great job. Thank you very much. Councillor Evans? Yeah, um, I'm going to echo the uh, same sentiment, although it didn't happen to me personally. But one of the things as a councillor, people thank us for the services performed by various staff members. And one of the calls in this month's report was uh, from somebody I know, and they said, I just want to tell you how impressed I was with the professionalism and the kindness shown to me by the fire department. And I said, well, I hope you tell them that. Well, just in case they didn't, I want to tell you for them and I'd like to do it publicly. But this applies regularly to staff. People tell me what a wonderful job staff does and I say, well, that's great, but I'm not doing it. So I like this opportunity to say publicly, well done. Thank you. Any other comments? You're next, yep. Councillor Black. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, as some as you, <clears throat> as some of you may know, and others maybe not, um, Sergeant Alain Leblanc, Alain Leblanc is taking an early retirement. Uh, as such, we're in a transition phase and awaiting the assignment uh, of a new acting sergeant. So the police report would have uh, appeared on page 41, but uh, instead the C the uh, CPO report uh, is on page 41 and 42 of the package. Um, as always, he's extremely busy at Mount Allison, Tantramar, Marshview, and Salem, uh, among others, sitting on various committees and uh, being a man about town in the community. Um, he had a successful bike rodeo this weekend at the Food Land. Uh, there was also, which is not included in the report, there was an RCMP drop-in at the farmer's market this weekend that was very well received by um, citizens in town. Um, the committees he sits on, uh, just to touch on a few, Crime Stoppers and Block Parent Program, uh, which he's been pushing hard in, in Sackville. The Youth and Adult Diversion Committee, uh, as well as uh, Mothers and Teens Against uh, Drunk Driving in the area. Um, as for his administrative, he has uh, nine active youth files um, uh, in the go, and most of those are at Tantramar Regional High School, where the liaison between youth and RCMP is so important. Um, I'm sure he does even more than what's in the CPO report, but uh, it's uh, pretty telling of how important an individual he is in, Sa in Sackville. That's my report. Any questions on this policing report? Okay. Uh, we don't have a, a, a time frame for the, the detachment replacement as yet, right? No? no okay. No. Thank you. No okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, folks? None. We move to policy bylaw. And Councillor Evans, is it? Um, <clears throat> policy bylaw liaison meeting was held on May 17th. And further to the presentation to Council on May 1st, 2017, by Natalie Lorette Bourke on breastfeeding and the request from Council to consider adopting such a policy. Staff created a draft policy for review by the meeting that would reflect the town's support and encouragement for the community to be aware that mothers breastfeeding their children in public 
is an acceptable behavior and should take place in a comfortable environment. Um, and there will be uh, a motion uh, coming. Uh, the second item on the agenda, bylaw 256, formerly bylaw number 218, Animal Control Bylaw currently has three amendments to the bylaw, being 218A, 218B, and 218C. Staff created a new bylaw, uh, number 256, combining the original and the amendments into one document. Staff also reviewed the bylaw in its entirety for any changes, or, uh, and they did make some uh, housekeeping changes, which we can refer to later. Uh, the Policy Bylaw Committee meeting reviewed the bylaw, and Treasurer Mike Beal discussed the changes being considered. Motion will be brought forward at the regular council meeting, I already mentioned that, and we're gonna bring those both forward. So before the motions, I'd just like to elaborate a little bit on this report. Um, town staff regularly uh, review the, the current bylaws and policies to make sure that they're still relevant. And something that they're doing, and at the discussion meeting, and I echo what the mayor said, it was a very useful and um, uh, meeting where we discussed at length what's happening here, but. When you have a bylaw with amendments, you have to read the existing bylaw and all the amendments to know what's actually being stated. And if you just look at the bylaw, you could read something and you'd be wrong. Um, you could be wrong in knowing what the bylaw said. So our practice now is going to be, if we make a change to the bylaw, we're gonna go through and have a new bylaw so that one person look, sort of a person looking at one document will be sure that they're getting the whole thing. So, I want to commend staff for this ongoing project of making sure that our bylaws are not only relevant but also uh, condensed into a single bylaw. And with the uh, policy that we're going to bring forward about uh, breastfeeding, um, the, the key point that the healthcare professionals presented to us is that breastfeeding is the optimum way to feed an infant. Not every mother can, but we want to make sure that there's no mother who's discouraged who wants to by anything that we have in place. So we're saying we recommend that you do it, we want to encourage it. That's the gist of the policy. And with that, I will end my report. And the full policy is on uh, page 45 of, of today's package. Yeah. Um, and we did go through it in I'll, detail. I'll do the motion if, uh, okay. So I move that council approve policy number 2017-2 breastfeeding policy. Moved by Councillor Evans, seconded by Councillor Mitten. Question? Question. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, sorry, Councillor Mitten had her mic on. I did not see it. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, thank you. I'd like to speak to this motion. As a breastfeeding mother, I just wanted to speak in support of this motion. Um, as mentioned and as outlined in the policy, there are many benefits, public health and individual health, to breastfeeding. And not everyone um, chooses to or is able to breastfeed, um, but breastfeeding in public, sometimes there are obstacles around that, so I am really glad that we are trying to remove these obstacles and, um, and help mothers and families achieve their goals and improve the health of families in Sackville. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Aiken. Thank you, Worship. Um, I see there's a sort of a logo on the, uh, the breastfeeding is encouraged here um, picture. Are we planning on uh, distributing those as like window stickers that businesses could put up? Could I ask the CAO to talk to it? <clears throat> uh, it was not our intention to take on the responsibility to produce the signage and or do the distribution. If they're dropped off, we would make them available throughout the community, but it wouldn't be an added expense uh, for to the town to uh, undertake that. Okay. Question. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. And I move that council give first reading and name only to bylaw number 256, Town of Sackville Animal Control Bylaw. Moved by Councillor Evans, seconded by Councillor Tower. Um, Any comments? Yeah, we, we, we probably should. We, again, we had a really good discussion at the discussion meeting explaining uh, because there really, there's more to it than just housekeeping. There were some things that were done to clarify that the policy, excuse me, that the bylaw applies to owners of dogs in the town of Sackville who are residents of the town of Sackville. It doesn't apply to people just passing through. 
Um, there is also um, uh, a change to the fee structure, um, and which is, um, sorry, I'm easily distracted. Um, um, the, one of the things that was mentioned in the explanation from staff is that the current fee, or the, we haven't passed this yet, so the current fees haven't changed in a significant number of years and they're going to be increased somewhat. Um, and just off the top of my head, those are the two basic changes that weren't just housekeeping, the residents and the fee structure. Thanks. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Thank you, Worship. Um, section 5.2, it says, no person shall keep or harbor any type of game, animal, or migratory bird, blah, blah, blah. Um, is the intent of that um, part of the uh, bylaw to you can't keep any kind of game, animal, or game bird? Because we have a lot of game birds that aren't migratory. Yeah, the, sorry. Um, I can try to answer that question. The, it, the um, game animal wording has remained unchanged. The key was that we wanted to exclude people who go and buy budgies and keep them in cages, which is something that's okay. And we wanted a way to distinguish between birds that are obviously pets and people who, um, I don't know, um, you know, catch migratory birds. The problem is it may well be that a pheasant, which I believe does not migrate, would be excluded. So again, we may have to revisit the wording if it presents a problem. But the intention was to separate birds that are acquired obviously as pets and people who get wild animals and keep them in their homes. That's a good question. This is first reading, correct? Yeah. So, so we can consider that in second reading as well. Um, Any other, any other questions or comments on this, folks? Question? Question. Question. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Personnel. Who's leading that one? <coughs> Councillor O'Neill. Okay. The uh, the. Uh, Council liaison members for personnel met on May the 25th, uh, myself and Councillor Bill Evans, along with our CAO. As of the last pay period in May, there were 38 permanent employees and four temporary employees, which were crossing guards and rec recreation maintenance, plus six summer staff. Uh, of course, we all know that uh, the town and our QP uh, reached a, an agreement, so everything's business as usual again there. And departments are well underway with the summer plans and for the most part have finalized their summer staff hiring. Several students have uh, commenced their summer employment with several more to come on during the month of June. And I guess that's the report there. So. Questions? No. And you have no, no, no motions? motions? Get off easy. All right. No other comments. We move on to J, Corporate Affairs and Strategic Development. Councillor Butcher. Yes, because I haven't had enough chance to talk tonight. So um, I'll be doing this report as well. Give me an inch, right? Um, this report is on page 54 and 55. Um, so staff continues to assist the Engineering and Public Works Department on the Lawrence Street Stormwater Mitigation Project. And um, they're assisting with the communication strategy and they're doing preparatory work for phase two. Um, upon an adoption of the terms of reference for the Waterfall Park Advisory Committee, staff has been working with the chair of the committee to formalize the committee members' positions. And staff now has a list of volunteers and community partner representatives, including Mount Allison University, Canadian Wildlife Services, and uh, there will be a motion coming forward uh, in regards to that to consider tonight. Um, staff have submitted an application to acquire the Crown Reserve Road in the Stanley Drive area 
and they were advised on May 3rd by the Crown Lands Branch of the New Brunswick Department of Natural Resources that the application was approved. So um, the road provides a direct link from Beach Hill Park down to Silver Lake, which could provide an opportunity for a future trail connection. And furthermore, the property also provides secondary access to the Beach Hill Park um, to Stanley Drive, which is beneficial for future development of the park as well as emergency purposes. So our municipal plan identifies a future road network in this area to facilitate connections on the northeast side of Walker Road and the next step in the process is to complete a subdivision plan as per the instructions from Crown Lands Branch and a motion to retain Rayworth and Roberts surveys limited to complete the work will be presented at the June 12th meeting which is tonight. Um, staff conducted an, uh, an internal sentinel emergency alert training on May 9th and um, Staff continues to work with Verity Design on a technical drawing for the beautification improvements for the exit 506 area and a draft of the drawing has now been prepared and staff will look at that to finalize it soon. The drawing will help define the scope of work and determine what can or should be planted in the area so that quotes can be obtained. And as noted in May, staff have advised the local citizens group of the plans and will be meeting with several members of the group prior to obtaining quotations once the technical drawings and the scope of work are prepared. And the community partners working group is scheduled to meet on June 20th. The meeting will be used to discuss plans for new neighborhood events in the fall and a second door-to-door -door campaign, increased public awareness in the group's mandate and details around the 2017 orientation week. Um, in regards to the Heritage Board, um, they met on May 16th and the board approved an application for work at uh, 1014 York Street and the board also approved a new standard operating procedure and have suggested a new criteria for heritage grants. So the revised grant criteria will now be forwarded to the policy and bylaw group before being advanced to council and their next board meeting is June 20th. And um, the Court of Queen's Bench recently determined that the Heritage Board is a public body under RTIPA. So another date has been set for July 29th for the determination on an RTIPA appeal. And the Heritage offer conti Officer continues to respond to inquiries from property owners and potential property owners in the Heritage Conservation Area. And that is the report. If anyone has any questions, they can forward it to Mr. Burke. Councillor Evans, you do. Yeah, I'm going to take this opportunity to refer to something that happened at the discussion meeting again. We had a very informative presentation by the town engineer about Lorne Street and stuff. And I, what reminded me was in this one, they talked about the Sentinel stuff. I want to take an opportunity to echo what Councillor Black reminded us all at the discussion meeting. If you haven't signed up for Sentinel, do it now. You can then be notified either by telephone call you get a voicemail, you can get a text message, or you can get an email message, or in the case of me, you can get all three, um, so that you will know what's going on. People who complain they don't know what's going on and haven't signed up for Sentinel have nothing to complain about. We are, we've made an, um, an arrangement so that we can provide immediate communication in all sorts of different methods so you can be aware of what's going on. I encourage the thousands of people at home listening and watching on television to sign up for Sentinel, go to the web page, follow the link. I'm sure it's right there on the front. Is that right? It's, it's easy to do. That's how I did it. It's on the web page somewhere. Yeah. Great way to find out what's going on, especially in an emergency. Thank you for this public service announcement. And I've noted in the past that I have been out of town and get those Sentinel messages wherever you are in, in the country. Water you are. Yeah. <laughs> um, and just one other question. I think that uh, the wording might imply that uh, that the Crown Lands Branch has approved the transfer. It's it's not quite that. It's they've approved the the discussion of a transfer, uh, uh, subject to the types of conditions they've laid out and and how that might go forward. So, are there any other questions on the report? Do you have motion? motions? Yes. I move that Council approve the following individual appointments to the Waterfall Park Advisory Committee. Sandy Burnett, 2017 to 2019. Rihanna Edwards, 2017 to 2019. Josh Couric, 2017 to 2020. Linda Shannon, 2017 to 2018. Al Smith, 2017 to 2018. Laura Tranquilla, 2017 to 2020. 
Gary Donaldson for the Canadian Wildlife Service, term 2017 to 2020, and Donna Hurley for the Mount Allison University from 2017 to 2019. Moved by Councillor Butcher. Seconded by Councillor Evans. Question? All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is carried. And I move that Council authorize staff to proceed with the acquisition of a Crown Reserve Road in the Stanley Drive area and retain, retra, retain Rayworth and Roberts Surveys Limited to prepare the necessary subdivision plan for $8,900 plus HST as per the instructions from the Crown Reserve Branch of the New Brunswick Department of Energy and Resource Development. Moved by Councillor Butcher, seconded by Councillor Tower. Uh, <laughs> Any questions? No. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion is approved. Thank you, Councillor Butcher. There is no new business that we have, uh, so we will move to question period for Mr. Work. Uh, two questions. Um, I take it, if I understand correctly, that you, Council appoints a Deputy Mayor once every year? Yes, it's required okay. under our, our bylaw. Okay, and secondly, it's um, my question is about the red ramps, uh, the age-friendly ramps on Bridge Street, the Bridge Street Cafe, and I gather the pizza restaurant. Um, I right. uh, wasn't clear um, who is providing those ramps and how they're being funded. It's a, uh, uh, it's, it's a national nonprofit group called Stop Gap, Foundation, I believe, um, and you can find it under the Stopgap Foundation, and they're leading it on a national basis as a, uh, because they've done all of the research on the legal placements of them and the, the sizes and the types of uh, uh, design that are required. Um, and so that l foundation has its own source of funding. And it locally, it, they look across the country for this to happen. It's in downtown Toronto, and it's in the smallest little hamlets in some places. Uh, and the principle they, that foundation exists on is inclusion and welcoming people with any disabilities that this is an opportunity for them to, to get into every facility in their town if required. So that then the foundation puts that information out, and people contact them for advice and information about how to go ahead and do it locally and they will give that advice until you are comfortable doing it locally. And so the businesses contacted them and... You know, you know, it, uh, local people were aware of it and they contacted the foundation and went across to a couple of businesses and said, would you be interested in this if we were to go find a way to make this happen? And so these were the first ones. So we're hopeful that others will now see it and contact our local people that have been involved. Most of them are involved with the age-friendly advisory group by coincidence, uh, and so there was a it, it fit in well with that mandate. So they have individually gone ahead and, and done this. And those first ramps have now been installed. The first ramps have been installed. They are removable. Some will pick them up at night and take them in, and some will leave them outside. That'll be the uh, the owner's discretion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Evans? You may have already mentioned this, but further to that, the uh, local high school shop class, I believe, are actually the ones making them? They, uh, I think the, the uh, instructor did these ones oh, so okay. that he was fully familiar with it. And I see. then any, the next ones will be done at Tantramar High. So okay. But a lot of volunteers involved, yeah. Any other questions? No other press? Any other questions from public? Hearing none, can I have a motion? Sure. <laughs> we have a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting, seconded by Councillor Tower, moved by Councillor uh, uh, O'Neill. Motion, those in favor? Aye. Motion is approved. Thank you very much.